good little one. I felt them break. I felt them break, but... They're not broken now. What the hell? Are you alright? I don't know how to tell. Shit! <laughs> We're in the cistern, aren't we? Oh, God. I need to get out of here. Is that where I need to go? Oh no. Let's go. God, I love how they turn that tank into this like whole claustrophobic escape sequence. That was really cool. Baby kicks, you can check in on it to reduce your fear. If we are to investigate further, then we will need to build a scaffold. We'll need wood and a good length of rope. I think there's some break in the walls deep below. The water level used to be much higher, and we can see light shining through the water.
This far underground? Yeah, that's the light, the blue light that I suspect is the, I forgot the name of it, but the thing trying to trick us, trying to trap us. So this is the cistern that they broke into, right? I mean, look at this as a feat of engineering. This is incredible. No matches. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. I think, and a bunch of beetles. Anyway, I need matches. Please. Pl mm. Oil. Okay, I'll take it. What is that? On that day, the people thronged the byways of the city. When the doors of the tower opened, the name of their new empress rippled through the crowd before her like dye into water. Tehana, blessed Tehana. She stepped down, bareheaded and barehanded, dressed in a simple robe, and she walked amongst the people. Some cried out with joy, some wept openly. Behind her came Tamaku and the rest of the alchemists, bearing a litter on which rested seven crystal orbs. What in the name of God? Yeah, what was that? Azriel. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Ruling in the southwest part of the world, and hath twenty great dukes to attend him in the day, and as many in the night, who have under them several servants to attend them. And we mention eight of the chief dukes that belong to the day, and as many that belong to the night, because they are sufficient for practice. And the first four that belong to the day hath forty servants apiece under them, and so hath the first four that belong to the night, and the last four of the day, twenty in the last four of the night, ten apiece peace what they are all good-natured and willing to obey thee those that are of the day to be called in the day and those of the night in the night and these be their names and seals that followeth Those eight dukes follow that belong to the day Latorus seal carga seal and so on there's pictures for this, the different seals. What the hell? I take it they built the cistern. 
some ancient civilization. I can hold on. I swear. It is the third day. I have fallen in with a group of Moorish travelers. One of them is suffering, struck with the curse of the king's evil, so I prayed with them for her fortitude, that she might reach the caves of the mother with all speed. They tell me that Tesempt is within two days' journey, should all go well. Yet there is an obstacle still to overcome. The path goes through the demesnes of one Tarkin race, a robber baron of the Ottoman people. Pilgrims must pay a heavy tithe to use his water and to travel the mountain bass. I have spice and three Collars left. I pray it will be sufficient. These are people that sound like they went through similar things to what we're going through right now, but far, far in the past. Yes. search this a little more peacefully. The queen had no king. Many princes came to court her, but none brought her joy. She was sad because she wanted a child. Um. She asked her wise people to help, but they said, Why do you want a child? We are all your children. I must have a baby, she said, because I cannot be queen forever, and someone must be queen after me. Nonsense, said the wise people. We will brew you a magic potion, and then you will live forever. You will always be our queen. So that is what they did. But sometimes, when she was alone, the queen cried, because although she was mother to the world, it was not enough. I stopped for a second when it said, um, the queen was sad because she wanted a child. Does that have something to do with why we're pregnant? Is that the queen's child? Are they trying to use us to make a child for them? It is apparent from the writings of Yusem of the intent of these newcomers. They came to us from a far place with their th thoughts set on conquest, and they made us into their servants, their slaves, their prey, their fodder. That last word may also be translated as crop. Their origins are unclear, but it is highly likely that this was another incursion from the lands around the Nile or even further into Persia.
It's a lot of gears. this side. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. Okay. Please close behind me immediately. Thank you. like a puzzle of some sort. Hmm. Looks kind of like a gear shifter system. Does this go up and down? Yeah. But it can't right there, of course. Looks like there's some gunk in the way here. 
But it doesn't look like there's anything in the way in the center. I'm not sure why that didn't work before. Maybe we weren't quite aligned correctly? Oh, no, 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 it's hitting that. This needs to be put back. Hmm, <laughs> that needs to rest on the bridge. Looks like that would allow us to get through that hole there. Like, assuming we can get to that hole there, we could come out on top of the thing and then make it there. I think that's what we just accomplished. get in there? Can I get that door open? But the bridge still extended? I can't move all these things on it. I thought I saw the problem and how to solve it, but I didn't. Let's just let this thing down. Yeah, I think I need it like that for now. Yeah, I'm not going that way. Yeah, we need to open this. Oh god, that's why it wouldn't open? There's a fucking body attached to it? Jesus.
to go this way. We need to go into the hole. Two matches. Only got one match left. Shh, shh, my love. <laughs> what is this stuff? Large one. One. Fuck. Oh god. If it can smell me, then fuck it, I need to run.
Oh god. Oh god. Accomplished, to be honest. Shush, no. What was that? Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, does this not have an exit? Or... Okay. Oh! Fuck. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Do not look behind me, do not look behind me. Okay! Okay! Fucking hell. <sighs> what? Who are you? What do you want? wants the baby. Well done, precious one. Actually, outside again. No, no, I'm sorry. Please be okay. 
I'm sorry, my love. Just, um, just let me know you're all right. I hope I didn't hurt you. You. What do you want? We came this way. Hank, stay with me, Hank. It's not good, Miss Trio. Not at all. We may reach hell, but he will not. Fuck. It's an oasis. Kind of too good to be true. Good. Don't drink too much. And uh, fill up the flasks, bottles, whatever you have. Yasmin, wait. The thing in the fort. A ghoul, you said. What was it? I... Uh, I don't know. It's just a story. It said they haunted graves and dead places. And they ate human flesh. Demons that were driven out of paradise. Don't go near it. Tazi. Follow hope. Life. I think... I think she's trying to help us. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. My god. It's a fucking devil it what it is. That's the thing we've been seeing. Fourth of March, 1937. I am Tezitrianen. I survived the crash of the plane Cassandra. With me are Hank Mitchell, Yasmin Shabani, Dr. Anton Metzier, Leon de Vries, and Malik Tambura. My husband Selim and others are in a cave near the crash and need help. Some have died. Richard Fairchild could not handle what we saw here. He ran. Alex Sterling has gone after him. We can't wait. We must do something that is... utter insanity. Hank Mitchell, our leader and my friend, was badly wounded by a creature in the fort. Yasmin calls it a ghoul. A flesh-eating monster from desert legends. She may be right. Hank is losing blood fast. And he will die. There is no time to get to help. There is a shrine here. 
to a local spirit. This will sound like madness. She appeared to us. A figure of glowing light. She spoke to us. She offered healing and to save us from the desert. And I... I agreed. She led us to an amulet, hidden here in the shrine. I took it. Now there is a... a shimmering doorway in the rock. I swear it wasn't there before. If we step through, Hank might survive. He is so pale. Oh, Salim, I don't know what else to do. This is crazy. But I promise, I promise, I will return to you. Fuck. This is insane. Alexander Melville Sterling. The money. Papers, British, will need a visa. Travel from Croydon with us. Alex Sterling, son of Robert Sterling. He's the money. Coming with us to feel like the big boss man and have an adventure, I reckon. Met up with him in Mayfair. Cheerful and charming and willing to get along and swears he'll know his place and follow all our advice. Yeah, we'll believe it when I see it. Maybe leave wrangling to Rachel? She knows how to navigate the British upper classes. Need to keep him sweet, but no special treatment. Can't travel without his private secretary. Not a great start. I'll admit he fits in better than I expected. These guys know Tazi. They bleed money, you know what I mean? It gives them this crazy confidence, like the world has to do what they tell it to. Doctor, oh, it's so good to hear your voice. Ah, you are still here. Well, where are you? The Oasis. Oh, we were here before. What happened to us? I just read uh, something I wrote. There's a spirit, a, a glowing spirit. I've seen her. I will explain it all, Tassie. Come to the village. We have lit a beacon in the tower. Look for the smoke. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor, you talked about my blackouts. I have these marks on my skin, and I keep losing control. You gave me a medicine. What's wrong with me? I, uh, I do not know for certain. We need diagnostic implements, reference books, civilization. Remember, Tassi, control yourself. Avoid fear. Avoid anger at all costs. I have to go. Yasmin, she needs me. Doctor? Doctor! Shit! It sounds like the doctor thinks we're pretty much a lost cause. There's the smoke. That's not that far away. Hey. 
It can't be far. Oh, little one. A village. People. A way home. Paris. You love Paris. We'll go walking in the Luxembourg Gardens. I'll show you where Alice used to play. Be okay, little one. Please be okay. When we get to the village, you can meet the doctor. And Yasmin, she's from Algiers. She's nice. And we'll figure out what's wrong with me. All will be well. All will be well. It's like it's like some darkness or corruption leaking out of this material. Wherever it is, it's spreading around it. Around the rocks, around the statues. to go there if I don't have to. I guess I have to, huh? Oh, Christ! We were so close! What the hell is this place now? Some sort? It's all made out of cubes. Oh. 
Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. Oh, little one. Every step we take it feels like we fall. There must be a way back. Feels like we're in a mad scientist's laboratory. Actually, if I say mad scientist, I can't follow that up with laboratory. It's got to be laboratory. A mad scientist's laboratory. I've seen that before somewhere. The woman from the oasis. Some lights we can turn on. What the hell? Huh. Under the sign of Ranu, on the fourth rise, at the eighth calling, I, Atharu, make this record. As Tamaku directs, I have compared the most ancient of our records of the Empress's malady with the newly taken samples. In the earliest of samples, Tamaku was correct. The nutritive flow to both organs of generativity were intact, albeit reduced, and therefore they would have been functional before the spinal repair. However, since the influx of vitae, the organs are now entirely withered. Why has the substance not reconstructed them? Did the degenerative malady affect them permanently before the treatment began? I have asked whether I should prepare a report for the Empress, but Tamaku informs me that this is unnecessary. It is of course merely of alchemical interest, and no matter for concern, for she is eternal. In her name. What's up with this one? It's switching between different, all sorts of different languages? Or it's just broken, but anyway, none of them English for sure. Under the sign of Ranu, on the third rise at the first calling, I, Atharu, make this record. I have completed the comparison of the samples from the Empress and from the bones of her mother, Blessed Atua. It is clear now that both carried this sickness, although it did not manifest in the forebears. While well, Vitae is powerful enough to rebind bone and sinew, without repeated application the health again deteriorates. A single dose is no cure, it merely drives the decay back for a time. Tamaku orders that I test repeated application, quantities, insertion points, timings. In her name. That's how we get light.
It goes through walls. It doesn't actually need line of sight. I find myself again confined. A day should not matter. But each day feels like waste. There is so much to do. Tamaku tells me that now, with Vitae, I have forever. But the people who depend on me... do not. There is always something. Invasion, rivalry, sickness, penury. I have my duty. Perhaps I should end these sessions. Now they've found a way to stabilize the disease. I should be ecstatic. I should accept my fate and move on. It is such a faint hope that they can find any way to heal me. That they can find any way to grant my dearest wish. Now you are eternal, says Tamaku. Now you need no heir. None of them understand. This is not about politics or securing a future. This is not for the Empire. This is for me. Just for me. Well, before I explore further, I think I'm actually going to end the episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.